So Bruce comes up and says, hey, I'm in a super competitive niche. And even after lots of strong links, press releases, drive stacks, et cetera, I'm stuck on the bottom of page one. I've maxed out on page and done some tiered linking. I heard somewhere that some sites hide strong links by cloaking behind redirects or something like that. Wondering what are some ways to leverage this and some other things I can do to push heaps of power and overtake my competitors. Tried getting PBNs to a cloud page, but didn't seem to do anything. Appreciate any help with this. Um, I mean, if you're stuck at the bottom of page one and, and you keep trying different things, uh, there's really only two things I can think of that without, again, more details, uh, more data would be um, click through rate manipulation or sending reels traffic to it. It doesn't have to be manipulated traffic or spoofed traffic. It can be real traffic. So like even running ads, potentially uh, Google ads. I mean that like not search ads. You can do that, but that'd be stupid expensive. But like um, uh, display ads, excuse me. Uh, if it's local, you can set geographic targeting to where the clicks that you're getting are local clicks. They're clicks from local, you know, people that are geogra like geolocated and phys close physical proximity to the project. So I know that that works. And I don't care what Google says. Google's, uh, Google ads don't affect SEO. Bullshit. If you do it properly, you can move the needle with Google ads for local. You absolutely can. Um, and I've proven that many times in our mastermind, done tests about it and shown the, the, the proof from that. So getting click through, click throughs, uh, whether it's spoofed or buying real traffic is one way to do it um, because that can actually move the needle, right? You can get uh, move it several positions that way if Google th sees that people are landing on the page and engaging, spending some time scrolling, et cetera. And you can spoof that with some apps and things like that too, but you can also do it with real traffic. Um, another thing would be, again, links, trying really, you say lots of strong links, but how relevant are they? And I say that with all sincerity, I'm not trying to be a, a jerk. I'm saying, what is your idea of a strong link? Patrick just mentioned that previously. What is your idea of, a, what, what, what is the definition of a strong domain? Are you talking about just purely third-party metrics? Like I said, I don't give a damn about third-party metrics anymore, unless there's relevance. If I can prove that there's relevance, then those metrics come into play. And so what I'm saying, when you say strong links, is it relevant? I don't care what the DR is or the DA is. I don't care. Honestly, if it's not relevant, then it's not, none of that matters anymore. So uh, I'm, I'm just curious, like, again, strong links that are relevant, that's going to help. Traffic signals will help too. Um, and so those are kind of two things that I would do. What are your thoughts? I, I So here's what I've learned by looking at a lot of the way people analyze this stuff. You know, you, did you ever see this quote by uh, Rand Fishkin where he's like, um, you know that 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 graph. Maybe you could even pull it up where it's like the the short tail versus the long tail graph. Where um, Rand Fishkin basically said that if the short tail words were a lizard, its head would be one inch tall and its tail would be 220 miles long. Right. A lot of times, what we do is we try to fight over what everyone else is fighting over. And when you're in these super competitive niches, most of the terms are in the tail. They're not in the head. So what I would say is like, what are this like 70, you know, what whatever these uh, 80, 90%, even more of, of the words that are in that competitive niche that no one is going after. These short tail terms, a lot of times, imagine you're in the legal niche or imagine you're in concrete and you search for like, hey, I'm really trying to go after concrete driveway. But there's like, as marketers and lead generators, we think that every time someone types in concrete driveway that they're looking for this contractor, but they're not. We That's just where our mind, mind is all the time. As you get into these terms that are three or four uh, words long, the buyer intent goes way up. Like imagine that same term is concrete driveway contractor, Dallas, Texas. That has a ton of buyer intent. Can we collect a ton of these? Because with the tail being that much longer than the head, there's so many opportunities that are low hanging fruit that maybe we don't have to like fight over these like short tail. And maybe you're not even going after all the short tail stuff. Maybe you're going after the long tail stuff, but there are tons of gems that no one is targeting that no one has written pages on. So whenever I'm in a competitive niche, that's the, that's the spot that we can get, we can get leads coming in in a few weeks if we go after some of those terms. Right. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, and, and I think it's, it's, it's completely overlooked. And I think people completely misunderstand the math on the, uh, the way that the search, the, the search term distribution works. 
Like you're, there's, you're so, I don't know, Bradley, have, do you look at things this way? What are your thoughts on, on that piece? Well, no, I agree. And I mean, building topical authority too, that will help. And that's what you, I mean, essentially that's. You, you, of, yeah. You're chipping away at the short term while targeting the long term. Yeah. And that's, I mean, again, that's, that's kind of a relatively newer term for something that we've been doing for years anyways, which is building, supporting content to a top level term. So that's like silo structure. Again, take top level term. That's the top of silo page create a category, and then you nest content with supporting content underneath where you're targeting the long tail. And all of that builds relevance to that top level page. That's called building topical authority. Now, now that we're in the semantic web, it's just kind of changed the term. It's essentially the same damn thing. What you got to be careful about though, is targeting too similar of yeah. keywords or variants of the primary keyword, because that can cause cannibalization. And that is one of the biggest issues I've been seeing for months now. It's It's been slightly dialed back in the last few weeks since I think the last algorithm update, I've seen a less of an impact on can, of cannibalization as I have for the last like six or eight months, but it's still a concern. And I don't know if that's just a temporary dial back of the algorithm um, by Google or if it's going to, so it might come back with a vengeance. I don't know, but I would still caution about trying to create supporting content with the title of the of the page being too similar to the top level term. Um, in the past, again, prior to this kind of shift in the algorithm, we would just take the top level term and create top of silo page and then all the long tail keywords and just create supporting content within that same category. That would work. But now it's, 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 if it's considered a variant of the same keyword, then that's cannibalization potential. Google says, OK, well, there's pages on here that are targeting keywords within the same topic. And so since they're both pages that are targeting keywords within the same talk that, that are somewhat synonymous with each other, we're going to demote both of them because we don't know which one should be prioritized. So you got to be careful about that. But that is something else that you can do is build topical authority, which can help move the needle too. So 